Hello everyone welcome back to aerohub and welcome to the series of lectures in aerospace structures in the previous lecture we discussed about the types of rivet as well as the bolt used in airframe design in this uh, lecture we will discuss about the rivet design as well as the failure mode affecting in the rivet design okay so to understand about the rivet design we need to know the certain important terms which is concerned with rivet design first one is pitch you can see a diagram here this is a combination of plate with rivet okay these are the rivet you can see and you can see certain lines here i'll explain what is the uh, significance of this line and the first term and one of the most important term is called pitch okay as written here the distance from center to center of rivet lying in a row is termed as pitch that is we can see this are two rivet which is lying in the same row the distance between the center to center of two rivets lying in the same row that is called pitch and this line is called pitch line or pitch length okay next one is uh, gauge line or gauge line the line of rivet parallel to the direction of stress it is nothing but the line passing through the center of rivet that's called gauge line you can see here we have horizontal line as well as vertical line these are called gauge line and the next term is called gauge distance okay so the gauge distance is nothing but the distance between two consecutive rivet is called gauge distance you can see here this is one rivet and this is one more rivet the distance between these two rivet which is distance between the center of these two rivet is called gauge distance you can see this is one rivet and this this is second rivet or the two consecutive rivet the distance between the center of these two consecutive rivet is called gauge distance okay now the next term is back pitch this is nothing but distance between the center line of two rows of rivet is called back pitch i have uh, indicated here this is one row of rivet you can see here this is a one row of rivet this vertical thing vertical rivet this rivet and this is another row of rivet and the distance between the center of two rows of rivet this is called back pitch okay this distance is called the back pitch okay now last term and it is also one of the most important term in the designing of rivet is called edge distance okay this nothing but distance of edge of cover plate the distance of edge of cover plate from the extreme rivet hole is called edge distance you can see here these are the extreme rivet hole we have 1 2 3 i i can't say this two are extreme rivet because this plate is not completely uh, pictured here and i can say this is one of the extreme rivet okay so distance between the center of the extreme hole to the edge of the plate is called edge distance okay so these are the important terms we have to understand while designing a rivet first one is pitch which is nothing but the distance between center of rivet in the same row second one is gauge line that is nothing but the line passing through the centers of rivet we have both vertical and horizontal line and through that line only there will be action of stress okay this is actually assumption the stone is gauge distance that is nothing but distance between two consecutive rivet then back pitch is nothing but distance between center line of two rows of rivet and edge is distance is nothing but distance of edge of cover plate to the extreme rivet hole is called edge distance okay now we will see about different failure modes affecting in the designing of rivet the failure of rivet is mainly due to the tensile tension failure shear failure bearing failure as well as due to the uh, incapability of material of plate as well as the rivet okay so you can see we have five types of failure the first one is the plate may tear off along the line of rivet that is called tension failure second one is the rivet may shear off that is called shear failure third one the material may fail to resist the bearing pressure between rivet and plate that is called bearing failure that is 
this is not mainly due to the incapability of rivet or plate fourth mode or uh, mode number four or uh, failure due to failure number four is nothing but the plate may shear between the rivet hole and edge of the plate okay we have mainly two type of failure that will affect that will cause at the edge of the uh, rivet the first one is the plate may shear between the rivet hole and edge of the plate and the fifth one the plate may split between rivet hole and the edge of the plate in a line perpendicular to the edge okay so i think you are not uh, you are not understanding these terms you will understand by seeing the diagrams okay so to understand or to design a rivet to withstand all this failure we have certain uh, denominations okay we have to understand that uh, we have to understand what is the designations used to bore load acting at a certain rivet for different failure modes okay so to understand the or to understand the design equations for rivet against tension failure shear failure bearing failure as well as uh, the failure at the edge distance we have to understand these terms okay so this uh, let p is the pitch of the rivet that is small letter p d is a diameter t is the thickness of the plate sigma t is a safe tensile stress of the plate okay the tension failure will be uh, mainly happens to the plate of the rivet okay p subscript t tearing strength per pitch length sigma u t that is nothing but the ultimate tensile stress of the plate p u t that is a pull applied per pitch length for tension failure this all will be applicable to the plate okay not for the rivets tau okay so when we consider about the second failure the rivet may shear off okay the so this will affect this will be concerned with the rivet structure okay so tau is nothing but the shave shear stress of rivet okay so tension failure is for plate and rivet shear failure is for the rivets okay and ps is nothing but shearing strength per pitch length tau u is nothing but the ultimate shear stress of the rivet and pus is nothing but the pull required for pitch length for shear failure okay we will understand that later sigma c okay this is nothing but allowable bearing stress or crushing stress okay i can write sigma b also i am writing here as sigma c sigma c is the allowable bearing stress or crushing stress pc is nothing but crushing strength per pitch length okay we know about the um, designation or we know about the term pitch this is nothing but we are considering the strength based on pitch length okay that is between two rivets then sigma uc is nothing but ultimate bearing stress pitch length is with nothing but uh, the distance between two rivets center of the rivet in the same row okay sigma uc is nothing but ultimate bearing stress puc is nothing but pull per pitch length for crushing or bearing failure okay pull per pitch length for crushing failure or bearing failure okay i think uh, you haven't understood about different types of failure by seeing the diagram you can you can easily understand the types of failure as well as the design equations also really really, really easy okay now we will see about each and every failure the first failure is nothing but failure of joint by tearing off plate along the pitch line okay you can see here we have a uh, plate with rivet here you can see two rivet and we are applying a tensile load here and since the material of the plate is not capable to take the amount of load the plate will tear off you can see here this line is nothing but the plate is tearing off along the pitch line along the pitch line of the rivet okay this is the this is nothing but the tension failure of the plate okay so the resistance to tearing per pitch length the resistance to tearing per pitch length i can write as rt or pt is equal to p minus d here p is the nothing but the pitch d is diameter t is nothing but the thickness of plate and sigma t is the safe tensile stress of the plate okay sigma t is nothing but safe tensile stress of the plate 
P is the pitch, D is the diameter, T is the thickness, sigma T is nothing but the safe tensile stress of the plate. Okay, this is the first failure mode. Second one, failure of joint due to shear of rivet. Okay, here what is happening means the rivet is getting failed, not the plate. Okay, okay we, can, we have two types of failure. One is single shear and double shear failure. In this case, we can see, you can see that we have two plate and we are applying a tensile load of a certain amount. We can see that this particular rivet is sheared off at the shear plane this is the this is a single shear plane here and that's why it's called a single shear okay and the rivet is failing here you can see here the rivet is sheared off here at the shear plane similarly in double shear what happens means we have two shear plane in this case we have a single shear plane this is a shear plane and in this case we have one two shear plane okay and the rivet is getting failed at this both shear plane okay so the resistance of shearing of rivet per pitch length this resistance is nothing but the strength that is a load okay so the ps is nothing but this is the area here the area we have to consider for the rivet okay that is pi by 4 d square pi by 4 d is the diameter of the rivet pi by 4 d square gives the area of the um, rivet okay pi by 4 d square the area of the rivet into the safe shear stress of the rivet okay we have to consider here the shear stress of the rivet not the plate tau is nothing but the shave the safe not shave safe shear stress of the rivet okay n is nothing but number of rivet per pitch length we will be having more number of rivet so we have to consider the how many rivets are available here so n is nothing but number of rivets per pitch length you will understand uh, how to take the value of n while doing the numericals okay and this is for single shear equation number 2 pi by 4 d square is the area of the rivet uh, and tau g is the shear stress so area into shear stress gives the basically the load okay so this load is we are basically calculating for both uh, case number 1 case number 2 here this is the stress and this is the area okay p minus d into t okay and this equation number 2 is for single shear when you have a double shear we have to multiply by 2 because we have two shear plane here this is a shear plane number 1 and this is a shear plane number 2 okay we have to multiply by 2 for equation number 2 that will be n into pi by 4 d square into tau into into 2 okay tau is nothing but the shave, uh, save shear stress of the rivet okay and we are multiplying by 2 but in the case of design cases for design purposes we are not multiplying by 2 we are multiplying by 1.875 or 1.75 that based upon the designer okay mostly in mechanical designs we are using 1.875 okay so this is the failure of joint due to shear of the rivet and next failure is nothing but mode number 3 here the material is not capable the material may be for the bolt or maybe for the plate okay so this can happen for both cases the material failure may be for the plate or maybe for the bolt okay so is what happens here means the you can see here we have a two plate here and this is uh, fixed using your joint using a rivet okay so the there will be a certain amount of pressure exerted by the bolt or the rivet to the plate okay and the plate cannot withstand this pressure or the plate cannot withstand or rivet cannot withstand this pressure or the stress and this causes bearing failure you can see here we are applying a certain amount of uh, load and this portion is teared off okay because the plate material is not capable of taking the amount of load or bearing pressure of the rivet that's why this failure is happening here okay so here the resistance of bearing resistance to bearing or crushing pressure per pitch length is equal to this is rc that is nothing but crushing resistance is equal to n into d into t d into t is nothing but d is the diameter of the rivet t is the thickness of the plate and sigma c is the sigma c is the crushing 
or bearing failure of the plate or rivet we have to consider based upon the problem okay whether it is for rivet or plate okay for uh, first case and second case first case we we have to take the stress for the plate second case we have to take the stress for the rivet in this case based on the material here here the material of plate is failing so we have to take the crushing failure stress of the plate okay when the rivet is failing we have to take the crushing failure stress of the rivet okay and n is nothing but number of rivets per pitch length okay this is case number 3 now we will see about case number 4 and 5 mod 4 and mod 5 that is failure number 4 and failure number 5 depends upon the edge distance of the design of the rivet okay the failure number 4 is nothing but failure of the joint by shearing out the plate between the rivet hole and edge of the plate okay what happens here from the edge this is the edge of the plate and the rivet is getting sheared out okay in this manner that's called the failure of the joint by shearing out the plate between the rivet hole and edge of the plate okay so this will happen at the edge of the plate this type of failure and there is one more failure at the edge of the plate the failure of joint due to the splitting of plate between the rivet hole and edge of the plate this is the edge of the plate and there will be failure like this okay opening failure okay is like opening uh, failure in uh, composite also this is the type of failure in uh, type number 5 this is called mod 5 and this is called mod number 4 so to prevent this type of failure what we have to do is the distance between the center of rivet and edges of the plate is kept as 1.5 t where d is the diameter of the rivet i repeat to prevent the failure number 4 that is in failure number 5 generally the distance between the center of the rivet the center of rivet is this one and the edge of the plate is kept as 1.5 d where d is the diameter of the rivet okay so that's all about the failure of the rivet we have five types of failure and first failure is due to the tens tension failure of the plate second one is due to the shear failure of the bolt third one is due to the bearing failure of plate or rivet okay this that third failure can happen to rivet as well as the plate okay and fourth and fifth failure is mainly at the edge of the plate and it can be avoided by providing a design in such a way that the edge of the plate is kept at a 1.5 d where d is the diameter of the rivet okay now we will see the relationship between the rivet diameter and the thickness of plate this is called and wins formula and the relation is d is equal to 1.91 into root t this is in centimeter and mostly we are using d is equal to 6 into root t that is in millimeter okay so i repeat this is the relationship between rivet diameter and the thickness of the plate and d is equal to 1.91 into root t root of t that is in centimeter that is d is equal to 6 into root of t that is in millimeter this is applicable while doing the problems okay so in next lecture we will see about how to calculate the efficiency of rivet and also we will start some numerical problems so that's all about this lecture thank you for listening take care